What's up, everybody? We have 10 minutes here to discuss the topic of weight in rifles. That is W-E-I-G-H-T. I think I spelled that right, referring to how heavy something is. And since our guest here is Nick Loffenberg, who's been on the podcast before, you can surmise that it will be regarding precision rifle. Uh, that's not to say that we won't talk about perhaps gas guns in general here, but generally we'll be talking about probably AR-10s or mid to long range gas guns if they do come up and, and bolt guns, uh, not so much your run and gun style shooting. So anyway, now that we've caveated that, you may have noticed the title by now is, you know, something along the lines of lightweight isn't always better. And Nick, maybe you can just right off the bat explain why that premise is true when it comes to precision rifle, and then we can dive deeper in it a little bit. Well, there's a few reasons. Um, first of all, I'd always say base your rifle weight on what your application is. Um, I mean, if you're a hunter, and you know, especially like a sheep hunter where you're doing a lot of climbing and, and uh, traversing over long periods of time, um, going with the lighter weight rifle is definitely advantageous just to cut down the weight of your gear. Uh, with that said... Um, you know, if you take a 6.5 Creedmoor, very popular cartridge for both hunting and precision, um, and you put that in a 6-pound gun versus a 20-pound gun, the results are going to be very different. Um, in, in the, you might get just as much accuracy, uh, but what, what you're going to get is um, more recoil, harder follow-up shots, um, and, uh, you know, spotting where your impact was. So With the you, lighter weight. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So with, um, you know, if you go with the ultralight rifle, you're probably going to come off target. Um, uh, and it's going to be hard to recover because you're going to come off target even more. Um, if you were to hit your target, being able to see where you hit it and where the animal goes is huge. Um, and also if you miss being able to, you know, if you're far enough away and you get that lucky second shot, you know, being able to see, okay, where do I need to correct for my wind or mm -hmm. if it was a high, was I low, was I left, was I right? So that's, that's another very important factor. Yeah. yeah. Or just an impact even. Yeah. Did, did I hit? Did yeah. I hit? Yeah. And weight is one of those specs that we see a lot get tossed around. And I think just any spec you can put a number to. Um, a lot of the times people, they try to grasp onto anything that can make a product better or worse than another one that helps them make decisions. We've seen it before and we've discussed the topic of magnification, for example. It's a number. People want it to just, you know, keep making the magnification bigger and bigger and bigger. It keeps getting better and better and better. But there's Correct. sort of... There's, <laughs> yes, if you're marked, that is correct, actually. Same with objective size. and uh, But there's kind of what I find to be like technical or numerical specs, and then there's practical specs. Correct, yeah. And with weight, a lot of times people see weight and they want to just dial it down as much as possible, almost have something that's just not even there so Absolutely. much. Um, and it happens with scopes, it happens with the rifles. But, for example, we saw uh, you know a shooter out at the Vortex Extreme. We've seen multiple shooters out. It's even happened to me and with my relatively lightweight Ruger American. Um, when you're doing a lot of transitional shooting and uh, you don't always have the opportunity to get perfectly set up behind your gun, if you have a lighter weight rifle and especially if it's a bigger cartridge that's maybe a little bit traditionally, uh, you know, more bucky, yep. then you can wind up either getting scope eyed, you know, oh, yeah. again, like we said, if you're transitioning, you didn't get the show, the buttstock right into your shoulder pocket properly before you ripped off a shot. Um, or, like Nick was saying, follow-up shots get yeah. that much harder. Well, so. in, a, in a situation like that where maybe you're not the most stable, like you said, you're describing an awkward position, with a heavier rifle, which I can't believe I'm advocating for a heavier rifle here, <laughs> but uh, it's stable. So it's almost like, it's not that you don't have to be, yeah. but it's definitely helping quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. And like, like Nick said, this is all extremely application-based. So Lightweight Dave, my brother, who's come on here before, he has some stupid light, like sub-five pound 6.5 Creedmoor I shot rifle. that thing in for a 6.5 Creedmoor. It's actually surprising the muzzle brake he has on there is extremely effective. Yeah. But it's still, I mean, compared to like my, my 6.5 Creedmoor that I got for hunting this year is... Um, it's remarkably more recoil. <laughs> so, right, vastly right. Um, different. Double the weight. Yeah, and know? he's taking that, like, I and mean, he's, he's packing, like, 60 miles total with that thing in mountains, and he's climbing with it. He's doing all kinds of crazy And that's stuff. the rifle for that application. Absolutely. Right. And he's I'm planning for... That. I'm much too fat for that. <laughs> but, you know, Dave's in extremely good shape. He's going to do it, and that's what he's into, and that's the rifle for the application. Mm -hmm. um, I think know. he's hopefully planning for one shot and yep. no follow-up shot. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. He does, yep. He's hoping yep. that he doesn't need it. Mm -hmm. um, Most definitely. Yeah. 
What's the average weight of, you know, some of these guys that are in PRS and other long range um, precision competitions? What's the average weight of the rifles they're lugging around out there? You mentioned 20 pounds earlier. I, you know, I don't know if that's. Yeah, uh, my my match rifle, I think, comes in right around between 18 and 19. Wow. Um, and that's a pretty, pretty average weight, I think. Um, I mean, there's there's some guys that have a rifle. I mean, I think Buck Holly's uh, 308 that he shoots for TAC Division weighs about 30 pounds. Wow. Yeah. You actually have, it. Th- there actually becomes in F class, I know for sure. Mm-hmm. I don't know if PRS is this way or some of the other ones, but there's a weight limit. Right. Yeah. The, it, it, and it's, it's you can't go higher than it. They do the same thing with King of Two Miles. You know, you have to be under a certain weight limit because some of the rifles that people were lugging out there to begin with were just I mean, ridiculous. they were like bolting them into the ground pretty yeah, much. Pretty right? much yeah, pretty much. I mean, it was and like, a, yeah. at that point, it was a barrel and, you know. <laughs> yeah, what do they call those guns? The... <sighs> There's a name for it. They're kind of like, a, uh, I always want to say like a howitzer almost. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> it's basically artillery that's attached to the ground. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Are you talking about like a rail gun? A rail gun, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, because in theory, if you had something that just literally didn't move when you shot, I mean, you would be able to just keep looking through the scope. It wouldn't impart any recoil on you. You, you, you get this chance to know better after the shot's been taken sure. what you did on that shot yes would you say absolutely there's I, less of a shock like guns moving around things happen loud explosion you know yeah well i mean i've got and i've probably talked about this before but just the scenario when i was moose hunting last year we spotted that bull ran down the hill awkward shooting position i actually had the old uh, 300 wisdom right mm-hmm. didn't have a bipod on it it's a fairly lightweight gun I couldn't get on the bull. We'd ranged him at 733. Like, I was on him, but I didn't feel comfortable breaking the shot because the gun just wasn't... It was that The reticle was just floating enough that I just didn't want to break the shot. The bull left, came back out. I grabbed my buddy's Ryan gun, my buddy Ryan's gun. It was a 300 Ultra Mag, much heavier setup with a bipod, sat like a rock. Bull came mm-hmm. out 733, shot him 20 yards, tipped over. Yeah. Right gun for the job. Yeah. yeah. That's a big thing. Is is is, is really is always application based. You know, we were just discussing rifle scopes before this podcast started, and uh, it's it's really about what you're going to be using the weapon system for. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be using it for competition, where you know you're not going to be rucking long distances, um, it doesn't matter if your rifle weighs a ton because you don't have to worry about that. I mean, you can either put it in your scabbard, run it on your shoulder, and just walking the hundred yards to your next stage. Um, not a big deal. Now, if I was going to be walking 60 miles, that's a completely different story. Yeah. Um, you know, with my current match setup, um, I'm using Defiance Action, um, a proof research with an M24 uh, contour, so it's a fairly heavy barrel, mm-hmm. and a uh, uh, MDT ACC chassis. And that topped off with a Gen 2 Razor. I'm shooting six Creedmoor right now at just a bit over 3,000 feet per second. And, Ooh. um, at Jim C's match here, he has a, a bottle stage where you got, they're essentially two liter bottle sizes and they go from like 600 out to, I, I want to say it's out to like 900 yards. Mm-hmm. And um, if you get the wind call just a little bit incorrect, you know, you're, you're missing. And um, the name of that game is being able to see where your miss was. Okay, um, right. Um, That's every, huge, yeah. Yeah, every one of those stage, every one of those targets, I shot and missed and then saw where I missed and corrected and hit him back to the target the second shot and then I went to the next target um, and if I wasn't able to see where my impact or my miss was I wouldn't have been able to correct it and then the entire way out I'm also looking at where I'm actually impacting the target specifically where on the target oh, so I know sure. if I need to correct right. a little yeah. bit more yeah that's a that's something that I think a lot of people just don't think that they can do is actually watching your bullet fly through the air through the yeah. rifle scope oh, after yeah. you've shot. And until you shoot behind a rifle that maybe is a little bit heavier or until you actually start concentrating on follow through and whatnot, a lot of people just think, well, I ripped the shot. Let's hope, you know, yeah. I have no idea where it hit if I missed. Let's just hope it was close. You know, somebody else, if they're spotting for me, can tell me. Um, but once you actually start doing that, it's it's pretty huge. It's It's kind of eye-opening for, I guess, lack of a better term. Right, right. Um, Once you actually see your trace, your your bullet, in, through yeah. your own optic and see where it goes and then be able to get the quick shot in the yep. hit with your next, I mean, it's, it's yeah, yeah it's, it's game-changing. <laughs> On that moose, I couldn't see the trace, but I saw, I knew it was an impact. I saw yeah. the, the moose buck. Yeah? Yep. With about 30 seconds left, Nick, where generally is, like, the best place to put weight in a rifle? Ooh, good question. For Down me? low, up high, out front, to the back. Yeah, so for me, it's it's uh, I like 
it's it's all about where your center of gravity is. Um, and that's because we do a lot of positional shooting and it kind of carries over into hunting, right? I mean, if you're shooting off a bipod, it doesn't matter so much because just as long as your weight is down, you know, you're, you're keeping yourself pretty well anchored. But if you're shooting off of structures, will it be a tree or shooting off of a barricade? Um, having that weight, uh, the center of gravity somewhere just forward of your magwell is super handy. Hmm. Okay. Um, my goal is that if I set my rifle up on a barricade, I can walk away from it and the rifle sitting there. Nice. Okay. All right. Good to know. Well, there you have it, folks. Lightweight isn't necessarily always better. Uh, everybody's applications will vary, but thank you, Nick, for joining us. That's Absolutely. about 10 minutes on the topic. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time. Lightweight Dave is rolling over and his ears are burning <laughs> yeah, right I'm now. I'm sure he's <laughs> disowning me as his own family. And, and yeah, uh, tune in next time when he refutes everything we just said. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.